Okay guys, I'm going to take you through today um, the Edexcel A-Level Maths paper, the Year 13 paper, A2, uh, which was paper one from 2018. Students who I teach, you've done this for your mock exam, but there'll be some questions in here that you haven't done because we haven't quite studied that topic yet. Okay, let's get started. So first one is going to be using the small angle approximations. It says, given that theta is small and is measured in radians, use the small angle approximations to find the approximate value of one minus cos four theta, two theta, sine three theta. Well, you should see from your formula books that sine theta is approximately equal to theta. But we've got sine three theta, so we should probably work out what that is. Sine theta is just gonna be approximately equal to, well, the same argument, so three theta. From our formula book, we know that cos theta is approximately equal to one minus theta squared over two. But we don't have cos theta, we have cos four theta. So that's going to be one minus four theta, make sure it's squared because the whole thing is being squared over two, which is the same as one minus 16 theta squared over two which is the same as one minus eight theta squared. So now we've got what cos four theta is and what sine theta is, sine three theta is, we can try and work out what this approximation is here. So we get one minus cos four theta over two theta sine three theta. This is just now gonna be um, substituting in the things we've just found. So it's one minus cos four theta, make sure it's bracketed for the cos four theta, which is this value here, which is one minus eight theta squared, all over two theta multiplied by sine three theta, which we've said is three theta. We get that this is approximately equal to, careful expanding the brackets, you get one minus one plus eight theta squared all over six theta squared. So we get eight theta squared divided by six theta squared. Obviously the theta squareds are gonna cancel and the eight over six is gonna simplify to four over three. First question done, three marks out of the way. Okay, question two, nice and simple here. We've been given the equation of a curve and we're gonna be asked to find the first derivative and the second derivative. What might be helpful though is to rewrite this as x squared minus two x minus 24 x to the half. Careful, the square root of x is to the half. A couple of people made a mistake with how they did that. So for part one of the question, dy by dx, we're gonna differentiate this. We're just gonna get two x minus two. Then we've got minus 24 multiplied by a half, bringing that power down and then reducing the power by one. So simplifying, we have two x minus two minus 12 x to the minus a half. And this is worth two marks to come up with this. The second thing it wants us to do is to find the second derivative with respect to x. So I'm just gonna differentiate this. Two x will differentiate to two, minus two will differentiate to nothing. I've then got the minus 12 multiplied by the power, which is minus a half, and then I've got x to the power of minus three over two, just reducing that by one. So I've got two, careful here, you've got the negative times a negative, plus six x to the minus three over two. And that's just your um, extra mark that you've got there for those first three marks. Part B says verify that C has a stationary point when x equals four. Now we know stationary points is when dy by dx is equal to zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put x equals four into this. So dy by dx when x is equal to four would be two times four minus two minus 12 times four to the power of minus a half. Put that in your calculator and we get that it's equal to zero. So there is a stationary point. You must say this. You must say this for a mark. You can't just say dy by dx is equal to zero. Part C of the question though, part C of the question says, determine the nature of this stationary point, giving a reason for your answer. So we have a stationary point. We now want to know, is it a minimum or is it a maximum? Or maybe something else, is it um, a point of inflection? So we're gonna substitute in x equals four into the second derivative. So we've got two plus six times four to the power of minus three over two. You could do this with a calculator. Um, I'm just gonna do this in one calculator. Four to the power of a half is two. Two to the power of minus, uh, uh, two to the power of minus three is an eighth. So it's six over eight. So that's 2.5. 75 that we've got here. 
I think that's right. One, two, yeah, that's right. It's, it's 2.75 or 11 over 4. Now we can clearly see here that the second derivative is greater than 0. So the stationary point is a minimum. So you get one mark for substituting in the value of 4 and a second one for a kind of conclusion statement that we've got there. Nice easy marks so far. Question three, people in uh, my group did not remember their formulae. Very quickly, the area of a sector where this is theta and this is r, the area is a half r squared theta. I don't wanna see anything about 360 or two pi in this question. The length of the, uh, the arc is just r theta. And we're gonna use both of these things throughout the question. Figure one shows a sector AOB of a circle with center O and radius R. The angle AOB is theta radians, or we can see this in the diagram. The area of the sector AOB is 11 centimeters squared. So immediately I know a half R squared theta is equal to 11. That's the first thing I can take from this statement I've got here. It says, given that the perimeter of this sector is four times the length of the arc AB, find the exact value of R. So I need to translate this sentence here into something to do with its algebra. So the perimeter of the sector. First of all, let's find out the perimeter of the sector. Well, I know that this is R and this is R and the arc length that we've said, this bit over here is going to be R theta. So the perimeter is R plus R plus R theta. And it says the perimeter is four times the length of the arc AB. And the length of the arc AB is r theta. So we come up with, simplifying this, 2r plus r theta equals 4r theta. So that's 2r equals 3r theta. I can cancel out the r's. So I get 2 over 3 is equal to theta. I can now substitute 2 over 3 in place of theta. So I get a half r squared multiplied by 2 over 3 is equal to 11. So that gives me that r squared is equal to 33. So r is equal to the square root of 33. One more question. I don't think this one came up in our mock exam, but it's worth having it in there. This question says, um, the curve with the equation y equals 2 ln 8 minus x meets the line y equals x at a single point x equals alpha. Show that alpha is between 3 and 4. So what we need to do here is we need to substitute in 3 and 4 into um, into the solution to this. So we have got, we think that we're trying to solve where these two things cross. So that's 2 ln 8 minus x is minus, sorry, equals x. So we're trying to find out where these two things intersect. What we're going to do is rearrange this so that it's equal to 0. And we're then going to substitute in alpha equals 3 and then alpha equals 4. If we have a change in sign in the solution, that's the thing that shows us that there is, uh, sorry, there's a change in sign in when we substitute in. That's the thing tells us that the solution is between three and four. So I'm gonna substitute in alpha equals three. When alpha is equal to three, two ln eight minus x minus x is equal to, not when, I've said alpha is three, I should have said here we're gonna do it when x is equal to three and when x is equal to 4, I get 2 ln 8 minus 3 minus 3. I'll put that in my calculator. That's 2 ln 5 minus 3, and that's 0 0.2188. And now I'm going to do it with x is equal to 4. So 2 ln 8 minus x minus x is 2 ln 8 minus 4 minus 4. So that's 2 ln 4 minus 4, and we get minus 1.227. So you get one of those marks for substituting in 3 and one for substituting in 4. You get another mark for saying there is a change in sign, and the function is continuous so there is a root alpha between three and four. Okay, just those two marks that we've got there. It then says a student uses the iteration formula. Um, 
the iteration formula xn plus 1 equals 2 ln 8 minus xn, where n is a natural number in an attempt to find an approximation for a. Using the graph and starting with x1 equals 4, determine whether or not this iteration formula can be used to find an approximation for alpha, justifying your answer. So this is one of the questions where we're going to be trying to find out, does it staircase or does, it, um, does the cobweb sort of spiral inwards? The way we do this is we go from x, we go up to our curve, and once we get to the curve, we shoot across to our other line, then we go to the curve, then we go to the other line, then we go to the curve, and we can see that it is starting to cobweb inwards. It's actually going to hone in on that blue dot that we've got there. So you get one of the marks for drawing on here, and we get another mark for saying, yes, it can be used. The diagram shows the cobweb spirals inwards. And that's what we get for the second mark for that bit there. Okay, this is a numerical methods topic we haven't studied yet, so I'll just take a break there.